friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. I'm Brandilyn Daly, and this is the kind of third installment in my Affinity Designer for Patterns Basics video. The first one was really long and covered most of what I really wanted to cover. The second one was a really quick tip that I added for something I didn't know when I did the first one. And this third one is a little bit more about the appearance of your studio. That's what Affinity Designer calls it. And so we'll kind of dig into some more of those things if you still aren't able to make yours look like mine after the first video and all of that. There are tons and tons and tons of really great Affinity Designer videos where I learned what I'm fixing to show you on YouTube. Um, they just don't focus on pattern projecting. They're more about graphic design, but it's okay because this kind of stuff, this really basic kind of stuff, totally crosses over. There's links in the description box to those other two videos I made and one really helpful video about Affinity Designer that's for graphic designers linked in the description box. And now let's jump on over to Affinity Designer and look up at how to fix and change up our studio. So this right here is how I like my affinity designer to look whenever I'm going to do pattern adjusting. And I barely remember even doing this, but over here, um, I created a studio preset called patterns so that it could look like this. Uh, I also started messing with it and, and made a video one, which we're going to delete right now um, by managing studio presets. I'm going to delete the video one. And we're going to make it again because I was playing around with this a minute ago. So we can use this view studio to kind of mess with everything. Um, all of these different guys, all these different bits and additions over here. We can add in, you know, um, paragraph. If you're typing a lot, that could be super helpful. We can add in isometrics. Um, and right here, it just added it as a second little friend right there. We can add in 32-bit preview. It's adding that in there as well. Let's say I want these to all be separate little guys. I can do that. Let's say I want them all right here. Set as, come on. Set as another little piece of the puzzle like this guy is. I can do that. I can close them one by one like this, or I can go and turn them off this way. I can turn off, where was it? The isometric, whatever. Um, a really quick way to turn off that left-hand studio is just to do it here. You can hide the studio if you want to do that for some reason. Then you can show it again. You can mess it up and then go tell it to reset. You can change things completely. Like say I have decided I want this to be over here. I can now, this is the way I want it to open up every time I open up for patterns. So I can go now, oops, in view and studio presets and I can add a preset and I'm going to call it video just for the sake of the video. Now I can switch back and forth. I can go to patterns and then I can switch back to, oops, wrong one, to video. I don't know what happened to colors right there. I would look into that if I were really going to stick with this. Um, it's so it's really simple. You just have to be willing to do the scary thing and click a few buttons. Um, you'll totally be able to to figure it out and undo it. Um, this reset button is an excellent, helpful thing. All right, I'm going to go through right here and just show you again this Manage Studio Presets. I'm going to delete that one. Could rename that one. You can also hit apply, which will make it 
show up this way. So yes, really quick and easy ways that you can make this video or make this studio look the way you need to for making your pattern adjustments. As a quick addition to my addition, um, I thought I would go ahead and show you the other things you can do with the view just in case somebody has some other issues. You can go and uh, turn on the rulers, which is not showing right now because I don't actually have something open, but you can turn that on. You can, you can turn on all these different things that may or may not be helpful to you. And they're really easy. Turn them on, turn them off. Show, not show something isn't going to drastically change what you're doing. You can also uh, change the, take that toolbar away and put it back. That's the one I believe that gives you all the extra little guys whenever you're, you've got certain things selected. You can take away the toolbar and make it come back. You can customize your toolbar by making different things show up in different places. Um, right there, it's showing me where I can add some things in if I wanted to. I'm just going to hit close because I don't want to do any of those things. Oops. I can, um, I don't know what docking tools means. I think that's where they all kind of snap together. You can also turn it off. Let's undock it and see. Yep, that's what I thought. Yeah, just sort of takes that off of being stuck to the side there. And you could customize your tools, choosing what order you wanted things in. Honestly, some of that I could do. I could take away the things I never use. I could take away these guys that I never use and really get this customized exactly how I want it. But to be honest, what I'm doing right now is working okay for me. And so I'm not going to keep fussing with it. I know it can be really scary with a new program to poke around and push buttons. And you're worried you might totally screw something up. I get it, but usually if you are willing to take that risk, you can find a lot of really cool things. That's how I found that extra um, tip that was in the quick tip just now. I was poking around looking for something else and accidentally figured out I could do a really cool shortcut to select all of one size. So poke around a little bit. Look at what things do. Remember what you did and you can almost always undo it. If control Z doesn't work, you can go find a reset button or, you know, unclick whatever you clicked. There's lots of resources to help you if you need it. Speaking of that, there is a um, group for Affinity Designer for Patterns. There is a, my Facebook group and a bunch of other things. You can find links to those in the description box. And of course, the Projectors for Sewing group for pattern projecting. Thank you for so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate how you guys are loving this series and it makes it really fun to keep finding more things to show you. I'll catch you in the next video. Keep watching my videos, like, subscribe, and comment.